Hey Geeks, this is Jim at MajorGeeks.com. I want to take a couple of minutes today to talk to you about um, a program that we, near and dear to our hearts, we love it. We've used it for a long time, but it's a bit of a cult following. Um, it's so good that we picked it for our top 25 ultimate utilities for 2025 and figured a good time to make a video on it. There's a lot to cover. Uh, so I'm going to be talking a bit fast. That's cool because I'm about 12 cups into my Pete's Dark Roast today. So that shouldn't be a problem. And at the end of the video, I'll show you some wicked cool things that you can do to with everything search that you cannot do with regular Windows search. So if you've anybody listening to this is use Windows search, you go to, you know, your search bar here in Windows 11 and you're going to search for something like dog. And it eventually brings up the the uh, the results for what you have for dog. This is nice. This is good. It, it works. It works a lot better now uh, than it has in the past. But the Windows search is kind of slow, and it takes up a lot of your system resources, um, especially when you're you're using a lot of files. And what it does, it's got a Windows search index running in the background all the time. And that's trying to not only name the files, get the names of the files, but also open the files like a PDF, a document, uh, uh, you know, and uh, any other stored thing. See what's inside that and also search for it. So if you accidentally rename your document on dog grooming to uh, bobblehead.doc, it's going to be able to read inside there and get it. But then it's pretty much overkill for most things and creates a giant search index that you have to go through that's typically unnecessary right so with everything search everything is instantaneous and the reason why it's instantaneous is it doesn't search within the documents it searches the ntfs table the file table of the drive so it's looking for the file names and that makes it super fast so if I, you see a search for dog it's going to bring all that up but it is super fast. I gotta gotta figure out why there's a corn dog and funnel cake thing. What the, the steam? That's kind of weird, but makes me hungry. So if I dog or maybe cat, right? So I got those things, right? You can do regular search expressions like star.exe, and I'm gonna bring up all the exes, or star. You know, I don't know seven z, and I'll bring up all the seven zip applications on on my drive or seven zip you know, files. Um, you can do that for, for anything. You can also like limit it to, I don't know, like uh, C star dot exe, which, you know, brings up all the, you know, uh, files with C that end with exe. What you also might not notice is you can see here, it will also search temp files, recycle bin. Um, it doesn't, just get the file on the drive it's actually searching the file table so if you accidentally deleted something it's going to be a lot easier to find things that way with everything search so that's sort of what everything search can do faster than regular windows search but everything search goes far beyond that and and i'll show you some of the tools that you can do with it like say for example oh oh Let's go back here for a second. When you install it, and you, you can change this in the options later, but when you install it, it the it'll come up, you know, normal installer, no big deal, right? Uh, make sure you install everything as a service. That'll help you out later. And then also make sure you check uh, install uh, start menu shortcuts and uh, context menus. That, that's, that makes everything search a little more integrated in your system and a lot cooler. And, you know, I'll show you. And again, you can do that in the options later. But the reason you want that here is if you want it to say search just my downloads, I can right click, search everything here, right? And you can see it puts the location in quotes. And then I can search from there. So let's say I just want my seven zips or my zip files in my download directory because I want to clean it up and uh, uh, you know, just delete them all, I can do that, get there very quickly and get that done, um, which, is, which is awesome. That's something, again, that, that uh, 
you know, adding the context menu helps. But what's wicked cool about it is now I can say, okay, I like this search. This is a search I'm going to use a lot, right? I'm going to look for zips and EXEs. I want to bookmark this search. I'm going to, I'm going to bookmark it. I'm going to name it this. It's going to remember where it goes. I can put all these options as to what I like uh, in it. You know, I can, well, I just want to search audio or, or whatever. I can drop down and tune that search to exactly what I want. In this case, it's pretty simple. I just want zip files in my downloads. Click OK. And then I'm going to, you know, next time I go to my everything search, right, I'm going to go to my bookmarks and I'm going to pull that up and it can immediately pull that out and I can delete the zip files or do whatever I like with them at that point, which again is something you can't do with other search applications that I know. And it's super fast. The, uh, so there you go. So that's kind of cool, right? The other thing is I alluded to was the expressions. Everything search gets, has so many tools it can do. It, it's a, it's a little, little hard to, to go through them all, but I'm going to uh, pull up this menu here on the search syntax. So you can then customize your searches to really anything you want. So for example, if you want to search an album for text, that's how you would do it, right? You can do all these different functions. And um, these are super nice ones. So you can search by file size empty, file size small, file size large, file size huge, file size gigantic, right? Which is which is awesome for if you're trying to clean up your drive, manage your drive, manage your, your uh, folders. So, for example, I've already bookmarked this, I think, uh, size empty, right? So, if you look here, I've got a bunch of zero-byte files, zero-byte log files that are just taking up space, you know, digits i don't really care right but i can change that from size colon empty to size colon i think it was huge right and uh, do that and it now start, finds files within that large huge size meeting so um you know i can start looking for files that maybe are taking up a whole lot of drive space right so again you find all those ex there's no point in going through them but search syntax and you go through and you can find all the things you want. If you want files from today, yesterday, tomorrow, by by what kind of date format, right? Um, and that makes it super powerful to be able to um, find anything you want with anything you like. But again, then you can bookmark it. So you don't have to remember what it was. It's like, hey, I got this search. I like, oh, I have to type it every time. And uh, there you go. So, and now that, you know, the whole, wait, there's more. This is the other thing that makes everything search super cool. So I don't know if all of you run uh, some file servers or media servers um, uh, on, on your local network. But if you do, um, everything search can be installed on that media server and then uh, search that drive so you can find it from wherever. And in this place, it would be the everything transfer protocol server is what I, I think that stands for. So you can set this up as, I think it's here, where is it? There you go. You can set up basically an FTP server file transfer protocol server here uh, on the other machine, right? You would put in what the interface is, like 192.168.0. whatever it is, right? If you uh, you want to be really silly, you could probably put all zeros in there and share all your files with the world. I would not recommend that. Um, but if you, if you just wanted to do a local host, I guess you could one, two, seven, eight, but what's the point, right? So you can then set up where that is, set up the, like, for example, pretend this is your uh, media server. You would put the IP address in there, username and password, good to go. And then if you want 
to then search your media server, you would connect to the FTP, type in the thing, the username and password, and go. If you don't want to FTP, you can also set up a web server. Again, you go under options, and in this place, it would be HTTP server. You enable it on the machine you want to share files with. Type in the IP address of the machine. Um, you would start, run, uh, IP config. So, oh, well, wonder what that was. Ah, whatever, you get the point. The uh, Probably something with my uh, recording software doesn't want my DOS windows coming up, but you would type in IP config and start run. Oh, huh, that's because I'm a coffee junkie and I forgot. You start run command prompt. One of you should have yelled at me about this. And then IP config. Yeah, uh, there you go. So in this case, this machine's IP is 10.0.0.10, right? And you're, uh, you would put that in here, username and password always. You can log who's going in and out, and then you can pick where you serve your pages from or just the whole drive. So if you have a huge movie database, music database, uh, something like that, you can uh, uh, serve it from there and pull it from any machine within your network super fast and and it's it's unbelievably quick so that is everything uh search engine it, it may be the fastest search available it's configurable it's command line you can bookmark the searches and you can use it as um a server for searching your your media or even if uh I don't know. Maybe you're at a at an office. A bunch of people have uh, documents. They can search it that way for, for uh, quick as well. So it's, it's crazy cool. It's a crazy great tool. Um, we we love it to pieces and wanted to do a video on it. So that said, it's one of the longer videos I've ever done. We're coming up over 12 minutes. I appreciate you staying here with us to the end. That helps out a lot. If uh, you like what we do here, please hit the like, subscribe button, yell out the window that you're watching Major Geeks videos. All that stuff helps. Get the, uh, get the geek name out there. We appreciate it. And uh, thank you very much for it. And until next time, friends. Geek it till it megahertz.